in um, the country between Pinewood and Paxville, South Carolina. And most people, when I say that, they'll say, well, Paxville and Pinewood are country. <laughs> that families could not spend money for extras and actually for things that they needed and wanted because they didn't have it and didn't have a way to get the money. But we had to buy the rice, so it was easy to need rice. We couldn't get it all the time as much as we needed. My daddy grew a garden. He also grew some types of vegetables in the corn field. We had a cow, so we had our own milk and butter. And when she had calves, we also had meat. We had chickens, so we had our own eggs, and we had our own meat. Very hard to buy new clothes. Oftentimes, I had one pair of shoes most of the time. When they got bad soles, we put pasteboard inside the shoes. My mother made my clothes, and I was always happy to get a hand-me-down. I had two little brothers, but one was born dead. The other one lived a week. And I have one sister who's four years younger than I am. And of course, we grew up together. And we fussed. We, were all, we could always make up. Yes, we did not always have a car and to have a little extra money. My daddy worked at a general store in Pinewood owned by Mr. Ed Bird from early morning and he came home at 12 o'clock at night for $5 on Saturday. He made his living by farming and when he first started farming, he lived on the plantation where the Reynolds family lived and owned. And as the Depression advanced, they lost miles of land. They owned more than acres of land on the plantation, they your own miles. They had to borrow money to farm with. And as the depression came, if the, we had bad weather and didn't make a good crop or good crops, we had to pay the money back that we borrowed to raise them for seed, and we had labor. We farmed with mules. The only way I worked on the farm was to make a few pennies picking cotton. And we had sacks that they fixed straps on, and we put them around our shoulders and neck.
a few pennies, that's right. And when I got those pennies, my first cousin, Leonard Reynolds, and I would go to a country store which was run by a dear old colored family. And colored means black or negro, but sounds, uh, I think, like it, whatever you think. Uh, Aunt Liza and Uncle Bill and my first cousin took out pennies. I would buy. Oh, they still have it to eat. Wait a minute, some kind of crackers. And he'd say, Mayor Lois, if you'll share yours with me, I'll share what I buy with you. He'd buy licorice candy, and I hated it. I couldn't even eat it. So he'd get half of mine and all of his, and I never caught on. Yes, but my daddy had labor on the farm, and that's how he got help, work, work help. I don't remember what he gave them, the salary. They lived in a home on the farm, and it was a very meager home, unpainted, wooden home, with no modern conveniences. And neither did we have modern conveniences. We had an outdoor toilet, which we called a privy, inside the house. We had buckets that we sat on and urinated at about it. We had no electric lights. Well, no electricity rather than electric lights. There's nothing that was run by electricity. We had a wooden cooking stove, two fireplaces which burned wood. I climbed the magnolia trees in, my, in our front yard. I sailed worn out shingles, wooden shingles, be sure to put wooden, underneath the bridge in the branch that ran behind our house for boats. And I did get a bicycle. I can't remember the year, but I was a grown girl, and I left it on that front porch at night, which was not screened. And one night it was stolen. We did discover who stole it, and he was punished, and it was returned. That's the only bicycle I ever had. I guess when I got through grammar school, well, I didn't have to um, wear as many pasteboard soles in my shoes. <laughs> and every now and then, I got a new, usually, but usually homemade dress. I graduated from high school in 1936. Incomes had increased just a little, but I attended college 
on two scholarships. Columbia College in Columbia. I think it was $300 or something like that a year. One scholarship was an honor scholarship. I graduated, you don't have to put this because it sounds like I'd be bragging, valedictorian of the class. And um, the one honor scholarship to Columbia College for that, and a work scholarship. I worked at Columbia College. I waited on tables my freshman year, and I'm not ashamed of it. And the rest of the years, I worked in the business office for the secretary. Let's see, I graduated from college in 19, 40. And of course, as I began to make a meager salary, I saw that the financial situation had improved. I don't remember what I made the first year I taught, but it was a little bit, but enough to live on. Did I find that living during the Depression affected the way I go about life. It certainly made me appreciate it, not having to worry as much about living expenses. And it made me appreciate better financial living conditions. And I actually became stingy when I began to make a little more money. Well, not more money than I'd already made because I hadn't made any, but what I mean when I was a little more uh, well off.